Jay, Elena, what's up today? I guess you recall our last lesson on the male reproductive features and their health implications. I hope you did enjoy the lesson. Today, we'll look at the opposite of the male reproductive features. I hope you recall that we said it takes two to tango. Pregnancy does not occur in a vacuum. It occurs between the male and the female. So today, the focus of our lesson will be the female reproductive features and their health implications under the main topic, adolescent reproductive health. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to, one, mention four features of the female reproductive system, two, explain the role of the female reproductive system in the process of reproduction, three, explain two health implications of the female reproductive features. Very well. Let us take a look at the last lesson on the characteristics. You do recall that we mentioned increase in height, weight, development of muscles, enlargement of breast and penis, and growth of facial hair and bodily hair, breaking of the voice, development of breasts, broadening of the hips. Why? You look too excited when you see these features. Don't forget they all constitute the parts of our body that facilitate our life processes. Now take a look at the female reproductive system rolling on the screen. Is this similar to those you found in the previous lesson? You're right. There are no similarities at all. The organs and functions of female reproduction are very different compared to the male reproduction. Yet, they are so complementary that neither can complete the process of reproduction without the other. Now let us take a careful look at the diagram showing on the screen. Do you recall that every part of the male reproductive feature has a specialized function? So it is with the female reproductive features. For example, the ovum produces and releases eggs for fertilization while the fallopian tube is the location for fertilization. How does an adolescent girl become pregnant? By having sex? Is it by having sex or unprotected sex? Unprotected sex. Does unprotected sex always lead to pregnancy? No. At what time in the menstrual cycle is an adolescent likely to become pregnant? You are right during the period of ovulation. The next question is, at what point does ovulation occur? Ovulation occurs between 10 to 14 days, plus or minus, after the last cycle begins. Take note, after the last cycle begins, not when it ends. So for example, if your last cycle began on the seventh of a particular month, you begin the counting from the seventh as day one and continue to 16th of the same month as day 10. In this case, between 15th and 20th, you are very likely to get pregnant if you get involved in unprotected sex. You may refer to your notes for further explanation. I said may because there are other factors that affect pregnancy. So, sexual intercourse does not automatically lead to pregnancy. Determining pregnancy involves several other processes, such as ovulation, fertilization, implantation, embryonic and fetal growth before labor, delivery, and the afterbirth. If determining pregnancy is this complex, how come a lot of young adolescents easily get pregnant? As common as pregnancy may occur, it involves so many complex processes that require attention and care of the body, especially the reproductive organs, so as not to jeopardize one's life. Jeopardy here means danger. For detailed information on how pregnancies occur so often among young people, protection and health implications of the reproductive organs, join me as I switch over our resource presently. Today, our attention will be on the female reproductive system. As you can rightly see it in the drawing here, look at the female standing with the reproductive system, the major one, 
which is the uterus here. This is the body of the uterus. We have the fallopian tubes. There are two, one on each side of the uterus, this way, the left and the right. Then we have the two ovaries that contains the ovum, the eggs. Females, both you and I lay eggs like a fowl, but ours don't come out like that of the fowl. Our eggs are in the container here called the ovary, the ovary, left and right. And we have the vagina, the vagina this way. We have the cervix, the entrance to the womb. What does the fallopian tube do? What does it do? It carries the released egg into itself and propels it. There are hair-like projections in it for the sperm to come and meet. And that is where fertilization takes place. Each month, an egg is released from each either side, either left or right. In case you have, you fortunately or unfortunately have sex during that period, your, the man's sperm rushes to meet the released egg and fertilizes it. It, it enters it and it fuses, it closes up. Then the, the hair-like projection pushes it into the womb again, prepared bed for it to implant. When it attaches, we call it implantation, it, attach, it attaches itself. Then pregnancy begins from there, gradually maturing, maturing, maturing. So the woman's abdomen becomes big for the nine months and she gives birth. So the service is the entrance to the womb and that is why the, the semen with the sperm passes into the woman before the sperm looks for the egg and fertilizes it. Inside the breast, it's also part of the reproductive organs, but the secondary one is the part of the reproductive system that feeds the young ones when they are delivered. Nature's own way of feeding the baby. It's not expensive. It's not uh, um, infected with anything, except that the person has HIV or hepatitis. But nature's own way, you don't buy it. The first two days that you deliver, you don't go to the drugstore to buy any milk to feed your baby. For the first six months, when you feed your baby to on the breast milk, it's a form of family planning also. But I want to tell you the females from age 10. Formerly it was, uh, females have their period, their menses from 14 going. But because our nutrition is good, it's better now, a lot of young girls are having their menses at, from age 10. 9, 10, 11, and you see them big, plumpy, as if they are grown-ups. It's always a delight to listen to Dr. Ntiyama. Thank you so much, Doc, for this valuable information. We hope this will not be your last time of sharing valuable information to our young ones. We look forward to seeing you again soon. See you soon. However, we shall be referring some of them to you for counseling and examination if needs be. Lennis, I believe you have learned a great deal from the doctor. Let us review what the doctor just discussed with us. Pay particular attention and note down anything you missed. We must avoid the following to promote reproductive health. That's what doctor says. One, unclean body and clothes. Two, dirty underwear. Three, wearing of tight nylon clothes. Four, bad body odor. Five, unclean sanitary pad and six hard drugs. This brings us to the end of another lesson on the reproductive features and their health implications.